Hey, I'm Chris, and uh, this is Working Hands. Today I got a 96 Suburban and it's got that common problem with the ignition switch. So on the 88 to about 98 trucks and then the similar uh, style Suburbans and Tahoes, the ignition switch can sometimes stick in the start position when you go to turn the vehicle on. And also there is a condition that's pretty common where the key will stick inside the ignition and you can't turn it at all. There is a fix of going around on the internet. You can kind of hit the back end of the key with the hammer, drive it in. It shifts the tumblers enough to where you can get it to start. And it will work like that as long as you do not turn it fully to the fully locked position. Uh, if you turn it to the fully locked position, then you're stuck. And uh, I had this happen on a 96 truck. And... Um, I ended up actually fixing that and when I get this uh, suburban column apart I'll show you how I did that um, but for now let's go ahead and get into it okay so the first thing you always want to do is try to disconnect the battery because you know you're working with the ignition switch and I think to get it out you actually have to tear, turn it to the start position and you don't really want to start the vehicle plus the steering column has the airbag in the, in the steering wheel and you you don't want to blow that up in your face. Nobody does. I'd also like to mention that I'm not a mechanic. I've never had any mechanics courses or classes. I'm going to start taking some of this plastic off around this column so we can get in there and release that ignition switch. So there's a couple of Torx bolts down here at the bottom. And it's been a while since I did my truck. So I don't necessarily remember where everything is at. I'm a really big fan of going to the junkyard if you don't know what you're working on and just tear into a car like yours figure things out learn where all the, all the bolts are when you got a panel that's stuck and you can't figure out why it won't come loose chances are you're missing that one key bolt and it's a lot better to tear it up on a vehicle in a junkyard than your own daily driver or project car. We we'll pop this boot off of this shift selector. It should come out. Maybe. And I think you can kind of flip it inside out. This one's pretty rough shape really. This car's got 236,000 miles on it. Okay, I'm going to have to try to get this uh, selector for the tilt column, the little handle off of it, so I can remove this bottom plastic piece. And it may take a minute. I'm pretty sure it just slips on with a tight clip. Okay, so that's what that looks like. That's your uh, selector for your tilt. You can still move the steering wheel, stick your finger in there, pull the lever forward. 
I don't recall having to do it, but I'm going to have to take this lower panel off as well. There are a few little hex head screws, 7 millimeter head, just along the bottom edge I think. I remember right, the panel just pops out. And on this model there is a vent down here at the bottom with a hose. I don't know if you can see that hose there. And I think it pops off. Actually, the whole vent pops out, which is even more handy. And then you can leave it hang here on your hood, your uh, brake release. Okay, you can see there's two little hooks. They go in behind the upper piece, hook to it, and then this lip here tucks underneath the bottom edge of the steering wheel. Okay, so having the right tool is worth a lot. You've got a couple bolts here, and the head of them is actually, uh, it's the equivalent of a T25 Torx. Uh, so you don't really have to go out and buy a special tool. You can take an old four millimeter socket, and it works just the same. And that is what holds that top plastic shield on. see it pushing up now this one this uh, bolt has a like a sleeve on it and so that's why when it when the bolt unthreads it's shoving that plastic up because it, it that bolt is kind of captured in between there right. I'm gonna tilt this column back down finish taking out this bolt with the sleeve on it. It's going to be kind of trapped in there. It's kind of pinned underneath the steering wheel edge. There's actually another bolt that is further up in there. This is for the right hand side. And I'm pretty sure it does come out like that. This thing's gonna be kind of pinned in between the cluster, the edge of the steering wheel, the ignition over here. I think that sounded worse than what it was. I may have to actually put the key in it, pull the selector down. upper plastic pieces off. Now there is 
a pinhole right here in the top of the ignition so what I'm going to do is roll the lock cylinder forward into the start position and I believe I can get to that pin in there you're supposed to be able to roll that key switch back and and slide it right out so we're gonna give it a try okay I got one of these Harbor Freight Pittsburgh little pick sets and I kinda modified the end of this one I use it for various things but I should be able to roll this into the start position push that pin and pull it right out and there's a key lock cylinder obviously this key was not one that was stuck in there my truck was um, this one was hanging in the uh, start position and I really didn't want to chew up my new starter so uh, for like twenty dollars you know you can get a new just a whole new uh, lock assembly okay so what happens when these go bad and they stick the key sticks in there the springs underneath of this go weak and that's where the tumblers are and when you push this key in this little plate is supposed to drop out of the way and it allows you to you know turn the cylinder over to start the vehicle uh, so what I had to do on my truck and it's uh, it's kinda sketchy there's uh, if you get your new one because you know if this is stuck in the in the column you you won't know where any of these parts are so you go ahead and you order your new ignition switch and you find out what position this little plate is in when the key is stuck in the off position or the locked position and all I did was I took a small drill bit and drilled through to that plate in that location I kinda marked the steering column and I took a punch and hit it with a hammer to knock that plate down and you kind of have to hit the punch and hold it in there and then if you can or have someone else turn the ignition over just to get it out of that locked position and uh, I did end up getting mine out and getting the uh, lock cylinder replaced uh, it took a little bit longer than you know normal obviously okay putting the new cylinder in kind of coated it lightly with some grease uh, I wouldn't go too crazy with it I don't know the effects of it but you know and earlier I did pull this down uh, into gear uh, with the key on so I could uh, get the top piece of plastic off so you obviously to get your key back out you're gonna need to put it back in park so you just line up the cylinder shove it in goes all the way in you turn it to your normal off position key comes right out goes right back in battery is of course unhooked so it's not gonna start but you should be good to go and then putting it back together is just the same as you know fighting the plastic pieces getting them all back on there uh, try to take your time and line up this uh, fixed bolt over here the the one that's got the T25 head on it uh, with your four millimeter socket try to start that uh, without a ratchet you know start it by finger maybe rotate it backwards till the first thread drops in just so you don't cross thread it because it is like a self tapping screw and you don't really want to uh, have loose plastic flopping around while you're driving down the road okay it was a little bit of a fight to get that back in you pretty much just start by slipping it over the ignition switch be real careful of your uh, emergency flasher button you know you don't want to tear that up those are handy um, but like Dylan McCool says you know have a little patience with it no need to get in a hurry no need to get frustrated or tear things up if it came apart chances are it will go back together 
now I just you know just kind of sew things up you know put it put it all back together and uh, hook your battery up of course and then give it a test run okay I got it all back together made sure I tightened up my battery cable real good because you know once you think you've got it tight maybe wiggle the cable and then retighten it just in case it'll save you a lot of headaches so people always say moment of truth and I don't understand why why would you say moment of truth would it normally be a moment of lie I don't know we're gonna give it a try start it right up Okay, so that was about all I have as far as tips and uh, uh, ideas on the easiest way to replace your ignition. Uh, I have seen a video where a guy, he was a technician, he took the whole steering wheel off. Not really sure what that was all about because I, I seem to be able to do it easy enough with leaving it on. Plus, I didn't have to mess with the airbag at all. Um, a lot of this, these repairs, you can save a lot of time and a lot of money, a lot of money, by doing it yourself. I highly recommend it. Uh, there are all kinds of videos on YouTube. I'm a big fan of, uh, well, a lot of different channels. Uh, subscribe to a lot of them. Mostly uh, old car repair and, and will it run videos. You know, everybody loves Vice Grip Garage, uh, Morsky Repair, Dylan McCool, Thunderhead 289, Junkyard Digs. All those guys are great. But I appreciate you spending your time with me. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe. I will do more. Uh, got some projects going on with my son. He's 13. And uh, I may get a video or two with my daughter. She's got a 68 Caprice. It's pretty nice. And uh, hopefully it's entertaining. Hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, hopefully I can find time to uh, get them done.